Fast forward to 1990 and Dean Orange came out with his landmark study on coronary artery disease, our leading killer is also not only preventable, but reversible. Um, fast forward to 2015, all 15 of our leading killers are preventable in Dr. Greger's book, How Not to Die, including Alzheimer's, uh, several cancers, diabetes. Uh, so when you said uh, how many, again, at least 80% are, are preventable, reversible. Um, in fact, our shameful stats are, are pretty sad. We spend over 3.2 trillion on healthcare with at best mediocre results. And, and mediocre is giving it more credit than it's due. In a recent Commonwealth report, we ranked 11 out of 11 uh, high income countries in healthcare. And that was looking at outcomes, disparity, access, and cost of care. Um, so, uh, a big reason for that is we focus on the end stage care with pharmaceuticals and high tech instead of um, preventing or reversing disease uh, through known mechanisms once they're there. Uh, we know that prevention works also from the seatbelt as we implemented seatbelt laws in the 90s, down went the fatality rate uh, from auto accidents. We have the capacity now to do the same with our other leading killers. And a fundamental paradigm shift is uh, taking over, led by the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, along the six pillars of lifestyle approach to staying healthy, healthy eating, physical activity, better managing stress, uh, great quality sleep, avoiding risk addictions and social connectedness are all part of it. And their vision is a world where this is now the foundation of a transformed sustainable system of healthcare. Um, so back to coronary artery disease, of course, this is our leading killer. And the results were nothing short of astounding in Dr. Ornish's work. Coronary artery disease patients with late stage um, on his program of eat well, move less, move more, uh, love more and stress less, had a 91% decrease in their frequency of angina. That's chest pain related to heart, uh, uh, decreased blood flow to the heart in just a few weeks versus a 180% increase and for the control group eating the same usual kind of post-cardiac diet. Um, later, Dr. Esselstyn showed the same thing with uh, almost 200 patients. Uh, and here you can see it on an angiogram on a 43-year-old surgeon from the Cleveland Clinic, raggedy artery here that serves the heart, main heart muscle and then wide open just three years later. Uh, so he calls it a benign foodborne illness, which may never exist or progress. This is our leading killer in our country with over 500,000 deaths a year. Um, so we now know too that tobacco used to be our leading killer. And now uh, I know as David Katz mentioned on a recent podcast with you, it's now squarely on the shoulders of dietary risk. Um, our food is killing more people than any other single um, uh, root cause. Uh, to think about how we can do better on this, I divide foods into four categories. That is uh, unprocessed on the top, processed on the bottom, animal on the left and plant on the right. And you get the idea that processed animal foods are down here in the corner. Up here, at least they look similar to the way nature presented them. But down here, your processed plant foods uh, filled with fat, salt, and sugar. And up here is your uh, foods that grown by nature in the plant kingdom. Um, in their most natural state. Um, so I, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the bottom half. I think most of your listeners are familiar with the fact that these Franken foods uh, are not really food for humans or animals. They're not food for anything. Uh, they're invented by the food industry designed to addict us and keep us coming back. So let's focus on that top part. What about animal versus plant foods? Um, and to think about this, I, I made a chart to see what makes a food health supporting. And let's compare plant and animal foods along these desirable characteristics that is rich in antioxidants, high in dietary fiber, alkaline, free of cholesterol, anti-inflammatory, rich in phytonutrients, and a balanced set of macronutrients. Um, if you look first at antioxidants, they did a study of more than 3,100 foods herbs, spices, and they found that the plant foods had an average of 1,157 units of antioxidants versus 18 for the animal foods. The, the plants make these to survive that uh, uh, photosynthesis and the free radicals that are formed. Um, if animals eat them, they use them in their process and not much is left over in their food. So the plant foods uh, help us to deal with this 
uh, fact that these free radicals are inevitably formed when you extract energy from food. Um, and these nasty molecules uh, called a free radical go around like a bull in a china shop, uh, creating DNA damage, mutations leading to cancer, proteins denatured, immune response, and chronic inflammation, endothelial damage, that's the lining of our arteries, atherosclerosis and stroke, heart attacks, and then cellular damage leading to cell aging and organ dysfunction.